I thought it was time to update my Ultimate Hunter. Here's a look at the NECA Toys Predator Ultimate Jungle Hunter Predator. Deep in the Central American jungle, the Predator is hunting humans for sport. Armed with plasma caster, wrist blades, and cloaking technology, the Predator methodically stalks and kills his opponents that he deems worthy. The jungle hunter Predator collects the skulls and spines of his victims as trophies and skins as prey, leaving the bodies hanging from the trees. When Special Forces team is dispatched on a rescue mission, they soon become the Predator's prey. Just before we jump back into the jungle, let's grab the tape measure and see how tall the Jungle Hunter Ultimate figure stands. Now, I already have this guy in my collection, but I've had the original one in my collection and on my shelf for all these years. And I thought it was a time now to replace it with something a little bit newer, possibly with better paint. You'll see in a second if my choices were right and whether it was really worth to get this guy again. In the meantime, though, the Jungle Hunter Predator stands about seven and three quarters of an inch in height, or the figure is going to be about 19 and a half centimeters tall. Yeah, really, the funny thing is, with all the reissues I've been buying over the years, those have been mostly Jason Voorhees, the Freddy Kruegers, the Michael Myers. All my original Predator figures are still the ones I bought years ago, and I've never really gone around and rotated them out with anything newer. So for comparison, I'm going to slide over this one, which, by the way, was the lot number on this one was 2021. So... It's still a couple of years old, but this guy just got recently restocked over at Entertainment Earth where I actually did buy this guy. And I did want to, though, bring in the original Predator so you can see, like, there's a considerable difference when it comes to the paint. It also seems to be the case as well that they've also changed the head sculpt where they've given a completely different helmet instead of the one they had initially before. A couple of other figures we can also bring in for comparisons now, just to show you, like, yeah, some of my older Predator figures have gotten quite loose over the years. This, I think, is the Water Immersion Predator, also from the first film. Here's also what he looks like with Dutch. And again, we also want to bring in, like, the mud-covered Dutch. I don't think I can see myself changing out the Dutches. They don't really need, or I don't even think they've been reissued over the years. Pretty much the one that we got from the last time. I think there's also the 25th anniversary Dutch. But, like, I don't think they've actually since then released any reissues of Dutches, but certainly you can see in the background at least of how the two jungle hunters differ from one to the other. Let's run through the accessories that come include with Ultimate Jungle Hunter. I'll also bring back that original Jungle Hunter just for a couple of comparisons. I, over the years, I don't even have many of the accessories anyway, so I won't be bringing accessories from a comparison to comparison standpoint, but at least I'll bring back the original figure. You can see really how much leaps and bounds they've made when it comes to the paint applications. Before we do that, of course, the figure comes included with a plasma caster plasma caster shoulder mounted cannon this looks to be the one i'm just going to bring back in obviously for this time around the original one so you can see that the difference between the two the colors seem much more muted on the 2021 release than the original one before casting seems to be the same and i can't imagine that they would have done anything different between the two plasma casters but it definitely seems a lot more muted when you compare the two I'm gonna move that guy out of the way uh, the attachment of the plasma caster works the same way as before if you look at the back of the figure just moving his necklace out of the way, you can see like there's a slot right there and maybe a little harder than to see. There's a slot actually at the top there. You're just going to take then the peg provided on the bottom and on the top, just line that up then in the hole below, and then you can attach it onto the top. Now I find honestly, it's easier just because like the peg has a harder time. I find to stretch across the top of the shoulder to not in fact, put that in first. And then while you're holding it sort of then stretch down the plasma caster till it snaps in place. Of course, while you're doing that, you want to make sure that you're not getting any of the necklaces ca caught up in the process. But that's what it looks like with the plasma caster. It works the same way as before. There's a hinge joint at the bottom, a hinge joint at the top, and you can also move it back and forth. I don't think I have it all the way in there. Again, like I think the necklace, yeah, the necklace was just more in the way of things. So let's just slide this down and plug it in place. I will say, though, like I don't recall having this much of an issue getting the caster on his shoulder in the other releases. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's just the molding of it that makes it makes it a little bit harder than the ones we did before. Anyways, that's a plasma caster on the Predator. Uh, the figure also comes with, I guess while we're talking of the caster, it comes with also an, an exhaust or a fired off energy effect that actually can attach. There's a little peg on the inside right here that you're going to take the plasma caster, which I, I am certain I don't have it completely attached, but you're going to take the peg anyways. You're going to line it up to the provided hole of the barrel, and then you just fit that in place. 
I have yet, honestly, yet to really display any of my Predator figures with the Plasma Caster actually firing anything off. I appreciate the fact that a touch like this is included, but I never really find myself displaying it with it. Because the moment I start to do things like this, I feel like then I, there's a responsibility. There's the pressures on my shoulders to then have the figures displayed in something a little bit more interesting than having them just standing on the shelf. And I, really, honestly, I have so many of these Predator figures anyways that just to get them in diorama poses would be a little harder to do. So again, I appreciate the fact that you get these things. They're made of by the way, translucent blue plastic. I guess they're kind of more translucent clear plastic, and then they just paint the blue over top of it. Excuse me again while I just go ahead and attach the caster. I don't know why, again, it's giving me such a harder time to get it in place. But while that is in place, at least for right now, the other accessories that come include with the Predator, you get yourself two versions of the skull. One happens to be a little bit dirtier that still has the spine attached. One has divorced the spine altogether, and you just simply get the skull. There is a gap of time, an elapsement of time, I would imagine, between the two skulls. This one actually looks like, maybe it's a little bit older. This one doesn't look as old or a little bit more polished, at least. But the skulls are very similar in design. This one also does have a hole on the bottom of it. And while may may not serve the purpose for Jungle Hunter, I think, in fact, you could attach this onto the end of a spear. Just doesn't come included with this figure, though. I do like both the inclusions of the skulls. Uh, a bloodied skull would also work quite well as well. But it was always nice to get extra accessories like this to be displayed along with your predators on your shelves. Let's move those out of the way. The figure also comes included with some swappable hands. Although in this case, the hands themselves don't serve much in the way of purposes. I mean, obviously you have a hand for holding like the spinal cord and skull, but like the other hand just sort of is, well, again, like a thumbs up hand. I mean, like these would be good ideally if you if the figure came, came included with a smart disc, but the, the fact that he didn't really use a smart disc in the first Predator movie, it seems kind of non-existent to include a hand like this. Other than the fact, again, like you can use the provided grip for, of course, holding the spinal cord. Now, with the hands, I noticed that the plastic, I don't know if it's just me, seems a little thicker and a little harder to move than before. So just move the hands away from the palm, and then you get your hand to hold the skull and spinal cord. I don't know if you probably would have it that low down, but you probably would have it a little bit higher, I think, to the skull. Because I don't think you'd be able to hold the skull by spinal cord alone. I'm speaking as somebody that's never really held a spinal cord with a skull on the end of it. But I would imagine it'd probably be a little bit easier to hold it with this dangling down below. And that, of course, can attach into the figure's socket of his forearm. The last of the figure's accessories involve me picking up a decapitated head. This is the, of course, unmasked head sculpt of the jungle hunter at the end of the movie. You're one ugly... Well, you can finish the rest of it for yourself. This is a family-friendly channel. <laughs> it's nicely sculpted all around, and uh, I don't really have really one to compare with. Obviously, I only have this one right here, the original Jungle Hunter. So, like, this one does have some really nice rich color. Bright colors in the yellow. You've got some additional browns added there to the top of the crest. And again, like, the dreads on the back have all the individual ringlets colored in a very vibrant metallic gold. Being, of course, this has spent so much time in the tray and has spent less time actually out on display. Uh, a lot of the hairs actually are just sort of folded in on one another, sort of like a scared tarantula. Ooh, that's not really the thought I need to have. But this just attaches onto the existing head socket peg, which we'll do in a more in a moment. Just quickly show you what the head sculpt looks like. I've always personally preferred to have predators with their mouths closed together like this than having sort of the mandibles stick sticking out. How do you like to prefer to have your Predator faces, at least unmasked faces? Leave and let me know down below in the comment section. I will say one thing, though, about the 2021 release, basing it only on the other Predators we've looked at over the years. It's a little harder to make out the eyes. Everything is quite dark in the socketed sections of his eyes that it's really honestly hard to even make out that there's pupils in there. I think they may have gone a little too generous with the black applied paint. Other than that, though, it's a really nice looking head sculpt, which, again, I will be replacing with the al alternate head sculpt in a moment. The other thing that the figure comes included with, not something that it can wear necessarily, is the removed now face plate. This is part, of course, of his of his helmet cover. It's nicely been painted here, kind of more of a slight off-colored gray. I say slight off-color, it's almost got like... Now, again, I'm only looking at this and kind of gauging. It looks like it's got a little drop of gold to an otherwise gunmetal silver. It does have a little laser scope to the top. It has a little crack there also in the front of the, the helmet there also as well. Now, this doesn't fit onto the face. If that was one thing that you guys were wondering, it, just by the way that they've actually designed the mandibles, most Predators that do involve you having to be able to fit the face on like this you usually have something that they've sacrificed on the mandibles. Uh, or they would just have it where you'd be able to take the mandibles off and then just pop that on in place. So this is based more so on the fact that it's going to just then remove the helmet, drop it onto the ground, and it's moving its way, progressing its way closer to Dutch. So I like that they included this little accessory. 
Picking up now the figure, and of course we're going to be looking at the defaulted head for right now before of course we switch out shops. I do really like the head sculpt on this one, and when you really do bring in the original one, do you really notice there's a difference between the two? It seems, though, to me at least, that the face, the lower half of the helmet, seems a little bit more compact, more accurate to the way it looks in the movie. The original head sculpt, at least based on the original Predator that I have, seems longer, doesn't it? Maybe it's just me. You can also see as well that the color of the links on the dreadlocks are also a lot more dimmed here on the original release, and a lot more bright and vibrant here in the gold. The bodies are one thing right away. You'll spot the differences. The original one sort of had a translucency to it. It's really kind of hard to describe unless you're able to kind of gauge it based on this video. That it sort of has, as I can best describe, sort of like a jelly look to it. If you can kind of gauge what I'm saying from that. It looks almost as if sort of it's got a translucent, almost see-through plastic, even though it really isn't the case. Like the arms are quite pale, the body is quite pale, and what speckles and meshing that they've added over top of the body does really nothing to bring some necessary color to it, where when you compare it to the, now the newer one, at least the one that I picked up, it's a lot more vibrant in the yellows, a lot more added, the additional browns, the blacks, and the speckles do stand out a lot more. It has, I knew it was going to drop, it has the little necklace there off to the side, which parts have the spinal cord. It has also the smaller little skulls there on the other necklace. And I don't know if you can actually see this one. This one's a little more tucked in there. It still has, again, like that collar piece necklace that wraps around the front of its headpiece or around the neck area. So like there is some considerable differences. So right away, I feel like I haven't missed or haven't lost out on money by picking out this guy. If I already had this guy in my collection, I do feel like there's a lot of differences, enough notable differences that it really was worth the pickup. One thing I also really want to bring to your attention is the fact that they've also painted the shoulders. And there's like one area right here that if to look at the original one, you can see it was molded to the arm and yet painted the same coloring as all the dark black. With now this being an additional piece that painted, it actually gives them a much larger shoulder pad, even though it looks like it's probably using the exact same mold as before. I was actually surprised to see when it comes to this one that both the tubes were still attached on my original Predator figure. These guys are always notorious for breaking if you're not too careful. With the arms bending the way that they do, you always have to worry that these tubes don't stretch. And when they stretch, there's always the risk that they bend. My arms, I, actually, in fact, the elbows are really tight still on this figure. But like even one thing, I've actually a, broken a couple of Predators over the years. You may have seen that in the review where I broke this tube. If you bring the arm too far out or too far back, you pull and tug this too tightly that this little tube ends up always breaking on the figure. And actually, again, I'm surprised for how old this figure is as part of my collection that neither one of the tubes, this one or this one to the side, has broken on the original figure. Again, like looking at the loincloth, the loincloth's a lot more bright of brown and some additional darker gunmetal gray, kind of more of a brownish gray gets really nicely added here on the original, on the newer one. And still, while the original one had it, the original one kind of was more uh, like a silver, like a gunmetal gray. Like, again, like there's a lot of real noticeable changes between the two. And while it'd be safe to assume that they're probably using a lot of the same mold as before, the head sculpt is something that does seem different between the two figures. Speaking of head sculpts, while well, simply I've already... I've already lost the plasma caster. I knew that thing was going to fall off. While we're also in the process of that, I probably could have just taken that off prior to doing this, but it sort of has helped me anyways. I'm going to hold on to the necklace because that's always one thing that loses if I'm not too careful. Just going to pop the head off from the ball peg, and then we're going to take now the swappable head sculpt, and we're just going to bring back the dreadlocks just a little bit so I can at least find the hole, and then we're just going to wiggle that onto the provided post. You may involve having to put a little bit of pressure onto it, but you can see now swapping out the head sculpt. Boy, does that look fantastic. Now, obviously, like you could have the figure still displayed with the plasma caster, but I believe he does drop that off anyways. As he moves his way closer to, of course, Dutch. Head sculpt wise, it does look really quite good with the rest of the figure's body. It does look bright here and maybe not as bright here, but like the coloring of the arms do match the coloring of the yellow that they use for the head sculpt. So it does look quite good. Looking at the, uh, oh, actually, just before we actually look at the postability on the figure, the one also thing that the figure still retains is not only the control pad console that he has on his forearm, close that up, but the figure also has still before, still like before, the figure just still has the retractable blades on the other gauntlet as well. For the figure's articulation would be still the same as before. The head is going to be on that ball post, so it does rotate back and forth. With this, it still allows the head to look up fairly high, I would say. The head also does look down, and you can also rock the head back and forth as well. The figure has an upper torso ball joint, 
as well. The figure does have a ball joint at the base of the abdomen that moves up and down also as well. The shoulders move forward and back, and at least this one can rotate all the way around. I wouldn't do the same thing, mind you, on this other side, just because, again, like the hose is going to break. Like, see how see how tight that already is for just the way I've got the arm displayed. You really do want to kind of bring the arm back down a little bit. The further forward you have it, the tighter that's going to get, the tighter that gets, the likelihood there is going to be that that's going to be breaking off. So you just want to kind of have the arm kind of on this side at least, unfortunately more of a relaxed pose. And of course the figure's arms do swivel back and forth. There's the elbow bend. Just again, be careful of this hose. And then the hands, of course, by the fact that they pegged in place by peg, you can just move them back and forth. And also, you know, again, you can rotate them all the way around. The figure's legs do split, so nothing has been changed, at least in that department. The legs go forward, the legs go back. There's a swivel at the top of the thigh. There is a double hinge on the knee again. And there's the articulation again, where it counts in the ankle, back and forth, up and down this way, and also rocking back and forth this way as well. At the end of the day, I'm happy. I'm happy I did get the chance to kind of pick up a newer version of Jungle Hunter. For all intents and purposes, really, now that I have a second Jungle Hunter, I could really display one of them on the shelf still with this original helmet, or what I could also do as well. Even though the colors are going to be off on the original body, for all intents and purposes, I could also swap out the older figure's head sculpt with the newer one, so at least there's going to be delivering a little bit better of a paint job than the original one we got before. And all in all, like again, I think there's improvements that justify at least my pickup. I might just also be saying it so I don't feel as guilty of the fact I actually bought another Predator, but I'm glad to see I did get one that had notable changes between the two. And I don't even know how old this guy is. This guy's been on my shelf for, man, I can't even imagine. Like, it's been at least a decade, even more. So I'm glad to see, like, getting a 2021 lot number release of the Predator, there has been obviously, I would imagine over the years, that the, some changes should have really been rightfully made. And the changes have been rightfully made between the two Predators. That if you have maybe, like, the older one, I think it's been time now that you could probably trade it up. Trade it up for something new with brighter, more vibrant colors. With all the countless reissues the person behind the camera regularly does. I mean, any longtime viewers to this channel know how often I'm buying reissues. All of those reissues have always tended to be Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, and Freddy Krueger's. All, in fact, usually are horror-related, and yet all this love that I've had for my Predator figures over the years have kind of remained neglected. It just so happened I was on, I think I was on Entertainer's website, in fact, buying a reissue figure, and I won't tell you what that reissue figure is. His video will be coming up shortly. But while I was there, and I just happened to have my laptop on my lap, I looked over at my Predator collection, and sure enough, while I was buying that one thing, I noticed that they had just restocked the Jungle Hunter. Well, I know it had been at least 10 years before, 10 years since I have replaced that Jungle Hunter that I had on my shelf, it may even be longer than 10 years, that I thought the time was finally here to replace it. I'm a bit saddened in a way that I will be replacing the figure. I'm sure I'm probably just going to be giving this to one of my friends, my original Predator figure to one of my friends whose kids love Predator figures. So at least it's going to be going to a good home. But part of me is kind of sad because I remember the time that I bought that original Predator. Even though this one is vastly better, I mean, clearly you can see the cases are that like the coloring is such more vibrant on this figure and all the accessories just have a little bit of extra touching up that the original Predator maybe not had possessed. But still, though, there's something to be said about having those older collectibles still in your collection to this day where it's got, it was kind of hard to replace them with something new. Just because you're replacing it with something new that maybe looks a little bit better doesn't mean there's the love lost on the original Predator figure. And I feel while I still am going to be giving it to a better home, I am going to be missing, though, that original Jungle Hunter for what he sort of represented to me, even though he was, for all intents and purposes, an outdated version. What do you guys think of the Predator? Let me know down below in the comment section. And have you done that? Have you ever replaced a Predator or any other figure that you have in your collection with the next best thing? And then part of you was sort of reluctant to the idea of even parting ways with it, not because it was outdated, but with the memories that you have attached along with it. If you ever had a case like that, let me know down below in the comment section. Also, as well as I've already mentioned, of course, I did find this one over at Entertainment Earth website. So if you guys are interested and would like to get this one for yourself, and let's say it is time, the prime time, to change out and replace some of those older figures that you have with something new. Yeah, again, click the link down below. that will take you on over to Entertainment Earth's website. While you're also there as well, the link will take you directly to Jungle Hunter. But while you're also there with that link provided, it'll also save you 10% on anything that you'll find on their website. Providing, of course, it is in stock. So happy hunting. Uh, I see what I did there. If you guys enjoyed this video, want to hit it with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. Have a little more time on your hands for killing. 
okay, have a little more time on your hands to watch more videos, maybe more watching videos and less killing. And popping up at the very end of this video will also be a Predator playlist. Feel free to check that out if, again, you have a little bit of time on your hands. More videos will be coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.